Okay, we are now recording the meeting. So, um, first I'd like to introduce Dan Partridge, Director of Lawrence Douglas County Public, County Public Health. Um, Dan? Thank you, Porter. We are here today to talk with you about our community's response to COVID-19. You're getting some feedback, Dan. Is that, are you, George? Yeah. Is, do you still have it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's better now, yeah. All sorry right. About that. Well, how about I start over? We are here today to talk with you about our community's response to COVID-19. Over the weekend, Lawrence Douglas County Public Health received notice of four new cases of COVID-19, bringing our case total to five. Each of these individuals has been contacted by LDCPH epidemiology staff and have been ordered to isolate themselves for a minimum of seven days. And if symptoms still persist, to continue isolating until fever-free for three days. As part of our investigation, we identify potential contacts who we believe are at high risk for exposure. These individuals have been ordered to quarantine themselves for 14 days following last exposure. Currently, 27 individuals are under order of quarantine. Public health staff are monitoring these individuals for symptoms and the length of quarantine would be evaluated should they become symptomatic. And we should all know that these numbers will likely continue to grow. During the course of these investigations, we've seen a shift from the first four cases having an association to travel to the last case having no known travel exposure. Given this instance of local transmission and what has happened across the country and state, we've been preparing in recent week with community partners and those in this unified command to work together to stem the coronavirus outbreak and promote social distancing. Yesterday, our Douglas County Health Officer, Dr. Thomas Marcelino, issued a stay-at-home order that will take effect at 12.01 a.m. Tuesday, March 24. It matches recent ones issued in neighboring counties of the Kansas City area, including Johnson, Wyandotte, and Leavenworth County. The goal of this order is to direct individuals to stay at home so that together we might slow the rate of community spread of COVID-19 through intensified social, social distancing. We recognize we will all need to work together in these coming weeks, but we ask you to keep this goal in mind. We know there are a lot of questions and refer you to Douglas County's stay-at-home order on our website, ldchealth.org slash coronavirus, to see all of the <clears throat> excuse me, services and activities that are deemed essential. If you see it there, then it is exempt from the order and, and fine. We ask that you keep in mind that we want the public to stay at home unless they need an essential service performed or work at a place that performs essential services and their work cannot be done. It's probably safe to assume that if you are wondering whether you're included, you're probably not exempt. Through this united effort and with full community cooperation, we can minimize the impact of COVID-19 in our community. And thank you again, Porter, for setting this up for us. No, no sound. Sorry, I put myself on mute. Um, thank you, Dan, I really appreciate your comments. Uh, next to the virtual podium is Russ Johnson, President and Chief Executive Officer of LMH Health. Russ? Thanks, Porter. Um, so I'm gonna touch base on two or three things that LMH is doing right now to uh, work with our community partners on this effort. And um, we, we have been partnering with public health and, and others in this arena um, for weeks and weeks now. So this is a partnership that is comfortable for, for all of us, and it's one we know that we need to do for the community. The three areas I'll touch base are on first start with um, supporting and preparing our staff. We've got 1,800 people who are going to be in the thick of this. They're gonna be the people who are taking care of all of us in the coming weeks and the people who are um, not isolating, but in fact coming into harm's way to take care of the folks that come to us who are sick. So we need to be sure that we're taking care of them first. Uh, they have tremendous expertise and skill in this arena. Disaster preparedness is something you hope you never have to use, but something that you constantly prepare for. 
And so this is an area that we're comfortable and confident. And I think working with the city, the county, um, Douglas County Public Health, and our other colleagues across the community, we're ready to do that and have pl uh, processes in place uh, to respond. Second thought I have is really engaging the considerable expertise that we have in this medical community. Um, that starts with, in this, um, in this instance, it starts really with our infectious disease physicians, um, the three of which have been intimately involved in this effort, Dr. Penn, Dr. Scrimshire, Dr. Breichel, they have really um, been at, um, at our elbows and involved with us in guidance now um, and have been incredibly helpful. Um, to that, I would add our emergency physicians, um, Dr. Reynolds, who's been leading that effort, our hospitalist, our pulmonologist, um, and a whole staff of expertise in respiratory therapy and uh, radiology and nursing, et cetera, and making sure that we're listening to and hearing um, what the best practices are and how we can be ready as an organization uh, to help care for those patients that come in uh, maybe one at a time to begin with and in the future in larger numbers. That really leads, uh, Porter, to my third area, which is readiness for a surge and any any um, condition that might lead to patients that are beyond our capacity. Um, and in that regard, uh, we're really looking at facilities in partnership with uh, Dan and his team at Public Health, uh, working with experts out of KU in, um, in their uh, engineering and architectural capacity to make sure we're thinking through not only how many patients can LMH um, accommodate in a surge, but what do we need to do if uh, we reach capacity for LMH and how do we support the community for that? Uh, secondly, or thirdly, um, in that arena, we're looking at our supplies on a daily basis. Uh, we get a report of, I think, 26 supplies every single day that shows what our current inventory is, what our pace is for using that inventory, you know, where we might be vulnerable. And we're and going beyond that to make sure that we are um, making those resources go as far as possible. You may recently uh, know that we, um, for example, put a hold on all elective surgeries and procedures and endoscopy. We're doing the same thing in radiology. That is an enormous impact on our organization, and it's um, and it probably impacts patients who had planned to have procedures done, but we're doing that so that um, the, both the, the technology, the facilities, and the supplies are ready for us um, when we get patients who really need us. So all of those things are, in a, and probably a dozen other things are actively underway at LMH. Um, we really are, I think, prepared to respond to this with our community partners and very proud to be uh, part of a unified command in this community. That's great. Thank you, Russ. <clears throat> um, now I'm going to um, invite Patrick Kelly, chair of the Douglas County Commission, to make a few comments, and then I'll let him introduce Sarah Plinsky, the county administrator for Douglas County government. Hi, thanks, Porter. Um, as Dan mentioned, uh, the Lawrence Douglas County Health Department and Health Officer Ms. Thomas Marcellino has issued a stay at home order and we continue to work to slow efforts towards the spread of COVID-19 in Douglas County. Um, similar orders have been posted in seven other counties in Kansas. Um, we know that this crisis has challenged our community, our state, our country and our planet and while we understand and empathize with the loss and fear and uncertainty that our current presents. I'm also inspired by the leadership and service that I'm currently witnessing. I want to thank our Douglas County staff, including those in administration and public safety and public health for their commitment to the people of Douglas County. They are working diligently to provide critical government functions while working to ensure their own health and safety. Um, let's not mince words. These are challenging, tough decisions, and I appreciate their leadership and continuing to ensure the health and safety of our community. I also want to thank our healthcare providers and our human service providers and educators and many of you who have stepped up to support our community in the face of this global pandemic. 
as we rise to this challenge, we must do so together. And I'm proud to share with you the activation of a unified command combining Lawrence Douglas County Public Health, LMH, Douglas County, and the city, and the city of Lawrence. Um, Sarah's gonna go into more of the details, but we know that we all have to work together um, to do our part to protect our community and our family. This collaborative approach will streamline the, that cross-agency decision-making and maximize our response. I do wanna encourage our community to do their part, to stay home and practice good hygiene techniques, wash your hands, cover your mouth if you're coughing and sneezing and practice that social distancing. We'll all do our part. We hope you'll do your part and look to a healthy and safe community. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah. Thank you, Commissioner Kelly. Uh, today, Lawrence Douglas County Public Health, LMH Health, Douglas County and the City of Lawrence activated what is known as Unified Command under the National Incident Management System. Our top priority is protecting the health and well being of our community, and we are doing this by working collaboratively to maintain essential services, distribute information, and provide support for all Douglas County residents. Our mission is to provide crisis leadership and guidance driven by our unwavering commitment to the safety of our community while encouraging each individual to do his or her own part to lessen the impact of COVID-19. We're working closely with the cities of Eudora, Baldwin City, and Lecompton, in addition to schools, universities, law enforcement agencies, first responders, and human service providers. The Douglas County Emergency Operations Center was officially activated on March 6th. Since then, nearly all of our county departments and dozens of community partners have been actively working in prevention, communication, and response efforts. Douglas County is working to maintain critical services while also following the Douglas County Health Officer's stay-at-home order. On March 19th, we limited public access to all Douglas County buildings, and many of our approximately 400 employees are currently working from home. We've launched a coronavirus website at douglascountyks.org backslash coronavirus that provides information specifically for Douglas County residents and it's continuously being updated. It contains information from the Unified Command as well as other community partners. We care deeply about this community and we're doing everything we can to keep everyone safe. And I'll turn it back over to you, Porter. Thank you, Sarah, appreciate it. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Mayor Jennifer Ananda of the City of Lawrence, who will introduce City Manager Craig Owens. Jennifer? Thank you, Porter. I wanna echo everyone's points up to this point on the situation and the importance of implementing a unified command structure so that everyone is clear on the decision-making processes across agencies. I and the other city commissioners have been in close contact with staff we appreciate all the work that has done by the that has been done with staff um, to this point. From my perspective, all four of the unified command agencies, along with the state, have been quick to stay ahead of the pandemic in our region as much as possible. The unified command structure will bolster future efforts and ensure increased efficiency and a maximized benefit for our whole community going forward. As this unique situation continues to unfold, I want to remind everyone to take good care of themselves and their families and to do everything they can to avoid exposure by following the guidance of the Lawrence Douglas County Public Health, Douglas County, Lawrence Memorial Hospital, and the City of Lawrence. Let's all work together to do what we can to move through this as efficiently and safely as possible. And now I will introduce Craig Owens, our city manager. Thank you, Mayor Ananda. On behalf of the city, I want to express my appreciation for everyone who has been working and adjusting so heroically during this unusual time. I appreciate working with our lead partners and, of course, all the many other community organizations, institutions, and agencies that have stepped up, along with our residents and businesses in this incredible time. The Unified Command Structure is invaluable as we all move forward through this pandemic. The City of Lawrence began to operate under an incident command structure about two weeks ago. Rapidly and with inspiring agility, our team has transformed into an organization 
that is ready and able to secure the essential services we know this community needs to survive. Even under attack from a virus that will cut into our capacity, perhaps dramatically, our water must be clean and available to everyone in our community. The considerable social disruption will, and unfortunately already has, spawned increased conflict and calls for police response. Regular emergency medical and fire calls continue and are added to now by a new volume of calls, which, which creates significantly more complexity with the possibility of exposure. Our solid waste services are as important as ever as people shelter in place. Our wastewater must operate consistently even as spring rains approach. Even cut down to minimums, we have enormous complications in IT, finance, and human resources to support functions and people under extraordinary circumstances. And for our team members who are not in these areas, we are redeploying them and asking that they learn different jobs and contribute in different ways. All of this has been put into motion and the capacity of our team is on display. We ask Lawrence to do what you can to make our jobs easier during this time and show patience as we encounter the challenges ahead. We are dedicated to maintaining the basic services on which our community depends. All three incident commands and the Emergency Operations Center have been doing an excellent job and now the Unified Command will oversee all the incident command operations. Most vitally, the Unified Command sets a common set of operational goals, objectives, and priorities that guide the unified and coordinated effort of all community resources. In this system, there is absolute clarity of responsibility and all resources are dedicated to common priorities without duplication or failure of ownership. This is a particularly important considering the fact that this virus could incapacitate any of the people who are responding to it in any role, a strategic challenge that we face in this particular incident. I will also note that a feature of the National Incident Management System is the built-in systems of handoff and documentation to secure efficient continuity of operations and objectives. We know we must keep these services going. I'm appreciative of everyone's dedication and flexibility thus far, and I know our community will continue working together to support each other and minimize the impact of this pandemic as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. I'm just looking for um, chat. I just want to remind everybody we are recording this and we are going to distribute this via social media and through our web pages so that everybody will be able to see this information in the very, very near future. Um, so now we have some time for some questions. If you have questions as we go through this, please submit via the chat option. Um, but initially we did receive a few questions based on our press release that was went out. Um, the first one is from Lauren Fox from Lawrence Journal World and she asked, will there be a punishment if people violate the order? The Kansas City Star reported that in Kansas City breaking the rules may result in a $500 fine or up to six months in jail. I can maybe start answering that question and, and that could, Sarah might finish the, it off for us. Kansas statute uh, does describe what penalties are, are uh, potentially applicable. If someone should violate a, this order, it ranges from a fine of $25 to $100 and it assigns the responsibility of enforcement to the sheriff's office. And Sarah, if you wanna speak for that to that, I'll let you. Um, I, I think Dan covered it pretty well. Uh, we're working closely with law enforcement, both um, all, all the police departments in Douglas County, as well as the sheriff's office and KU police to make sure we're doing our best to keep our community safe. Um, we're the, part of the reason why we're having this press conference is to hopefully pass along to the community that we need voluntary compliance um, with this stay at home order. And, and that we ask our community to follow the rules that really will keep us all healthy. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> another question is, are there any plans to put occupancy limits on essential businesses like grocery stores? Should we expect lines in grocery stores to grow? Would you like to say anything about some of the hoarding that has happened in Douglas County thus far? 
Well, the orders that we've issued speak to limiting public gathering of no more than 10. It talks about staying at home unless you have an essential function or, or work in the essential service need. Um, so how those, how you interpret those orders, um, you know, I, I'm really hesitant to just say, here's the recipe that says, here's how you comply, because every business, every situation has uniqueness to it. Um, the spirit of these orders are that you remain home and stay distance yourself from others. So, to me, the spirit of the law is the most important piece rather than the letter of the law. And the spirit of the law is to stay away from others, to socially distance yourself, and do your part to limit the spread of disease. Thank you, Dan. Um, I suspect that these may be your, for you as well. Um, from uh, Chad Lawhorn of the Journal World, I think the public is still struggling with what is expected from them with this order. There are so many businesses that are still deemed essential and thus can be open. Perhaps it would be helpful if it could be described how different you expect Lawrence to look and feel tomorrow when this order is in place. If people follow this order the way you hope, how much less activity do you expect to see in Lawrence and Douglas County? Well, I would say I've already seen a great difference and I, I want to echo the comments we've already heard from other presenters here today in, in thanking the community for doing their part. Um, our commute to work today was uh, pretty free of traffic. And so I would say keep doing what you're already doing. Um, the community um, is already looking very close to what we want it to look like. And that is um, we're staying at home. We're, we're, we're only going out when it, the need to do so is critical. Um, that would be my answer. Okay. Um, in addition, uh, apparently they've been getting questions about why the health department hasn't provided a more specific, or, or sorry, more specific examples of what businesses need to close. Um, is there any explanation on the thinking of that? There are other, there are, are there any other prime examples of businesses that you want to list that should be closed? Um, mm -hmm. or any others? And I think the order actually speaks to that, doesn't it? It, it does speak to some, but it does also... Uh, leave questions that we're trying to answer. We've, you know, received multiple questions today about how to interpret the order and I'm working with staff to kind of put together some additional guidance for our website um, that we hope to be at uh, post later today. Um, the direction I've given is, is that because it's almost impossible to answer every individual kind of nuance to the interpretation, to put together some guiding principles and um, framing questions that will help people critically think through the, or the uh, order um, and come to their own uh, solutions. Okay, great. Um, if an employee feels that they are being asked to work in an environment that doesn't comply with the social distancing guidelines, what should that employee do? Is there any action Douglas County Public Health can take on such a matter? Specifically, we've gotten several questions about call centers and some of the tight working quarters in those businesses. Any guidance for that? Um, you can certainly direct any concerns to us and we'll problem solve with no promises to that. Um, but I would say work with your employer first. It's always best just to work within your organization to create solutions rather than, um, you know, um, bring external partners into the, onto the table. And just to remind folks, all this information is on your website, um, linked via other websites as well. So people can actually find the, the actual order um, and print that out if they need to and bring it and show to people if they need to. Um, this is either for Russ or Dan. What is the status of testing infrastructure in Douglas County? How readily available is testing? How long is it taking to get test results back? And is the testing system in Douglas County adequate? Dan, do you want me to jump in on that first? That'd be great. Sure. So uh, we are doing testing in Douglas County. Um, as you may know, we set up an ambulatory drive-through clinic called a respiratory evaluation clinic. Uh, we've done over 100 tests through that, or 100 folks have come through that. Um, you may know that Katie and h and &E has um, limited its testing to um, critical patients and hospitalized patients. 
we have pivoted um, in using um, an outside lab for our services. Um, and uh, the turnaround time for that is about 24 to 48 hours, I think. Um, those testing criteria still need to be met, um, uh, which includes a physician's order. Um, we, we don't do a test just because somebody comes in and would like to have a test done. It needs to have a physician order and we're following uh, protocol. And the reason behind that really is that um, we know that supplies and testing capacity is going to be limited. Uh, it really needs to be focused on those folks that are ill and that uh, our physicians feel like need that test. Uh, we are looking internally at our capacity to be able to do tests and our laboratory is engaged with um, uh, the expertise uh, required to um, be able to do internal tests ourselves, and, and we hope uh, to have that capacity uh, in mid-April, uh, but there's a number of hoops to go through in order to do that. Thank you. Um, also for Russ or Dan, do you have projections or a range of projections for what Douglas County should expect in terms of number of cases and when do you expect to see the peak? Dan, do you want to take that? I, I can. I didn't want to step on your toes though. Um, so we've done some modeling um, and when I say we, that's the planning team of the uh, public health and LMH health. Uh, they've been meeting almost daily for about a week now. Um, we're actually modeling from using a model from the University of Nebraska Medical Center and using their model and a uh, uh, incidence rate of 30 or 40 percent. Our projections are that the peak will be around 300 hospitalizations um, and that that peak would be in roughly 30 days. Am I getting that right, Sonia? I think so. Okay add ish to the end of all of that. Okay. And um, this question is for city manager Craig Owens. Does the stay at home, stay at home order cause any changes for public transit? Will it still be operating tomorrow? Uh, we still plan to continue our transit service. I, I think uh, KU cut back a little bit on its routes with its lower population, but um, we we will stand ready to make adjustments as we go on. But as of tomorrow, uh, we would still be uh, operating. Okay, and I think we have a few questions in the chat. Um, Hannah Brandt from KSNT News. She's asking, what does the stay at home order change? How is it different from the state rules already in place? In other words, no events larger than 10, canceled school, et cetera. I think it's just explicitly saying that um, it's not just a matter or a function of 10 or fewer. It's really saying stay at home. I mean, the, the order is, isn't overly complicated. It's, it says stay at home. Um, And Dan, I, I would add to that, not so much what the order says, but you know, going back to your previous comment about surge and the unpredictability of surge, um, a fair amount of that will be our own community's ability to monitor itself and to adhere to these guidelines. So um, those guidelines about stay at home and social isolation and all of the practices that uh, commissioner mentioned, um, those matter. And they will matter in four to six to eight weeks from now if we ignore them. Um, and they will matter if we don't ignore them by uh, keeping people safer. Thank Thanks. you. Um, we have a question here from Jay Schaefer. What does the city or county need but does not currently have? And how many patients can LMH handle and in parentheses, how many beds in ICU with ventilators? I'll respond on the first part. Um, you know, I, I think people understand that there's uh, a, a shortage of protective uh, equipment and our first responders obviously have no choice in uh, their interactions with the public in, in that way. So I'd say that's, that's an area, but that's, that's been widely publicized and we're, we're hopeful that we'll see some, uh, somebody to address those. Um, 
the only other thing, as I'd say, is just reinforcing what Russ just talked about. We absolutely need people to comply with these things, and they're just not. It's not complicated. It's and it's it's not um, uh, that interesting. But do the social distancing and wash your hands and uh, stay home when you're sick and get that social distancing just just to help our community. So I would say uh, that helps every single part of our operation, and it's a leverage. Uh, for an, our entire uh, operation in each of these four critical areas that we're trying to address. So uh, please take it seriously. I, I would add, Porter, that um, LMH is planning for and working with uh, the Douglas County Health Team and, and Public Health to plan for a surge. And But what we do know is the same thing that every hospital in this country knows and that is if there's a surge, it will outstrip um, capacity, and we will have to uh, do our best with the resources we have. Right now, we're in good shape, um, but uh, it's, it's important to understand why those things that Craig reiterated are important, because um, it is possible that a surge would outstrip any hospital in this country's capacity in terms of uh, the things that Jay brought up, ventilator support and intensive care beds and uh, personal protective equipment. So we are very much focused on making sure we have uh, as much of those supplies as we can reasonably get, uh, given everybody else is trying to obtain the same thing. And, Thank you, and I would, I, I guess I would just throw in a little bit too that part of the unified command structure system will allow us to identify what resource needs we need collectively as a community and be and work collaboratively to source them. So that's another advantage of the unified command system is that we can all work together on on meeting those resource needs. Good point. Thank you, Sarah. Um, next question is from KOFO Radio. There seems to be quite a number of exceptions to the stay-at-home order. How will you determine if a person is or is not out on essential travel? I think it starts with um, each individual, and I, I want to maybe beat that drum again that you know we encourage it and hope that everyone will do their part. Um, there's exemptions in there, but I think the real ask is to stay at home and um, honor the spirit of that law rather than, you know, am I in or am I out? Um, with, because regardless of whether you're in or out, um, if you don't need to be out, stay at home. And I think we could also add that you know, for, for businesses that need to stay at home, just like many of us here in, in uh, your community services, we're looking at new and different ways to figure out how to operate um, from, from a distance and online. So I think this is an opportunity for those businesses to, to look at their ability to continue to provide essential services online and that is in compliance with uh, state and local guidelines. Thank you. Um, Lauren, you asked about how many patients. It's, I think Russ sort of answered that question for you. I don't know if, he, if that's satisfactory. Yes, sir. Um, and let me move on as she's, go ahead. Just said, sorry to repeat that. Um, I saw that after I, I posted that. Okay, no, that's fine. I just wanna make sure you, you had it, but you do have a, another one here. Craig, you mentioned an increase in police calls. Um, do you have any more information on that? What are the nature of these calls? How large of an increase are we seeing? It's, it's uh, more of the type. Um, we're seeing some crimes of opportunity, unfortunately, and um, in burglaries. Um, those would be the types of things would be, you know, it's a really unfortunate that we're seeing those right now. Uh, the overall call volume is lower, um, which is a good thing to see. But as the tensions rise here when people are out of their, uh, out of their routines, um, it, it, we, we just are try, hoping that people um, uh, don't take these, these crimes of opportunities in, into account and, uh, and uh, be kind to each other and take care of each other. We'd like to see that. Great. Well, I think that covers all the questions that we've received via chat and email. Um, 
Thank you to everybody for taking the time to do this. As I said, we are recording this and we will post this very quickly on social media and on our web pages so other people can access it. Um, whoops, now I'm seeing one more question. Hey, Porter. Uh, okay, go I'm ahead. Just gonna, I'm just gonna speak here if that's okay. I just wanna make sure I got this right. Of the four cases that were just uh, added on today, there was just one of those that was spread uh, by the community, correct? That's what we're seeing. The other three had traveled out of state or internationally. I think Dan's muted here. Dan, I think you're muted. Sorry. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, I'll, I'll answer it the second time, maybe better than the first. Um, yes, you're correct. The last case was we do not have a, a travel history or an exposure history to another uh, locale with known spread. So um, our, our working premise is, is that the spread, that the exposure came from within the community. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, oh, did I miss one? I apologize. Um, sorry, we had a question about blood donation. Um, Porter, we had a blood drive here on the 13th, I think last week, and um, had pretty good turnout for that. I did speak with the folks representing the, uh, the blood services, and uh, certainly that remains important. And, um, you know, we support it. We um, had it here on our campus, and handled in a way that would reduce isolation and keep people safe, but uh, we know that that's important for lots of other patients too. Right, okay. All right, um, I believe that does cover everything. Hang on, I'm just double checking, I'm not missing anything here. All right, great, well thanks again everybody for taking the time to do this. We'll post this as quickly as possible, and obviously we'll work to keep everybody informed in the future. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.